Hello. We had a good session on tap here today, huh, Ryan? Yes, definitely, Russ. Glad to be here. Yeah, so I'd like to introduce ourselves. My name is Russ Festino. I'm a developer advocate for Algorand. My uh, Twitter's at Russ Festino, and email is listed there. And also the uh, QR code is for our, our LinkedIn. And uh, Ryan, how about you? Hey. Well, good morning, good afternoon to you. Uh, I'm Ryan Fox. I'm also a developer advocate here at Algorand, and you can reach me on Twitter at Ryan R. Fox, or of course, follow us at Algorand as well. Well, let's uh, take it away, Russ. All right, sounds good. We got a great session on tap here on blockchain for developers. Uh, we do have a few introductory slides for those that are brand new to blockchain as well. Uh, if uh, uh, you do have experience. So it's always good. Repetition is always good in my book. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started here and um, uh, continue on here. So with blockchain, uh, what developers need to know, and when I first started uh, developing blockchain, first of all, what is it? And then why do I care? Uh, also, what type of solutions can I build on blockchain? So those are probably the big three leading questions that I had when I first started doing blockchain development. Uh, also, you know, what programming languages can I use? Can I use a language that I'm familiar with? And uh, this is also another big question developers have uh, when getting to go, when getting to start to create these uh, type of solutions. And then, how can I build a DAP? And what are DAPs? And and you know, how does that work exactly with uh, everything being decentralized on the blockchain? Uh, so our apps as well. So the app stands for decentralized uh, apps. So let's go. We're going to answer all those and more here today as we go through the deck and uh, the presentation. Um, I'll start out with the uh, Algorand blockchain. We're going to basically do three sections here of the talk here. We got the intro. We've got the use cases. Uh, Brian's going to hop over and, and show you how to get started with uh, all the layer one uh, tools. And then we'll have a recap with uh, some of the ecosystem and uh, and third party products that are out there. Okay, so Algorand uh, basically is a, a mutable uh, distributed ledger, the Algorand blockchain. And for those that are new, basically it consists of five different record types. It's the easiest way to think of it in my mind. You got blocks which are, are created, uh, which is really a time slice. So over a period of time, uh, there's an associated number of transactions that are recorded to the, the ledger. So it's immutable. It's a read-only, write-once uh, ledger. And the transactions then are between who? Between accounts. So accounts would be a sender to a receiver, for example. And then each account would have affiliated with it uh, assets and applications. And assets will be your Algorand standard assets and applications will be your smart contracts. So that's kind of the lay of the land, real quick, simple architecture in terms of what is in the, the, the ledger. And how about types of blockchain solutions? Uh, there are different uh, categories, I guess you can say. We've got uh, public versus closed. So a public is is, is a um, open uh, blockchain and, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and a private is a permissioned and, and, and public is a permissionless is really where I'm going with that. So if you go to the upper right corner, public and open, basically you can create Right off the get-go, um, currencies, betting, uh, gaming solutions are all good examples of public and open. And what about public and closed in the upper left? Things like voting. Well, you want the voting part to be public. Maybe you want to hold off on displaying the results to a certain a certain period of time. Uh, so that, that could be considered public and closed. Uh, down in the lower right, you got private and open with supply chain being a really great example for a blockchain solution. Uh, also, government financial records, corporate earnings statements and so forth. And on the bottom left, you have the private and closed, which would be your most secure. So, you know, what it, types of applications can you create on these modern day public and open blockchains? Well, in, in case of Algorand, you can do all of these really, uh, and really what you would need and any of the ones that are not in the upper right corner would be some kind of authentication and some kind of a, a, a identity management type system where you would be uh, doing that in layer two off the blockchain. And so it's really up to you and your developer staff to, to facilitate that type of development. But really the bottom line is uh, all of these are supported on, on the Algorand blockchain. To give you an example, we talked about records uh, being stored, for example, government records. El Salvador recently uh, did this. They uh, are going to put all of their uh, country's records uh, and agreements uh, on uh, the Algorand blockchain. So that is a very, very cool thing uh, to hear and a big announcement that came through uh, in the fall. 
So some solution examples, all well, DeFi is exploding. So this is really uh, huge. Uh, DeFi is probably the biggest vertical market, I would say, on all the blockchain solutions that are out, they, out there today. And think about it, you know, prior to blockchain, uh, you had um, uh, banks, <laughs> right? And banks were the ones that were had all the tools, right, to do all, all the you know, mixing and matching of uh, funds and stocks and all that kind of stuff. And now all these tools are available to everybody. And so now you can see why this is exploding. It's not just banks. It's like really any kind of company that wants to put together kind of a DeFi type solution uh, in the way of uh, decentralized finance. Uh, some good examples of this on the algorithm blockchain are the power of stable coins through Circle. Uh, USDC, a really huge number in circulation. USDC, by the way, is a stable coin that uh, fluctuates with the uh, US dollar. One of the biggest problems with cryptocurrency is the volatility, right? It goes way up and then way down and makes it difficult to do transactions with that. Where, well, with uh, stable coins, that, that kind of gets solved. Yieldly, also multi-asset staking and cross-chain swapping on Algorand with bridging and staking and no-loss lotteries. Lumi allows you to choose Algorand to power crypto payments as well as and it works with any Algorand uh, uh, ASA. All right, and we'll talk more about uh, what those are, Algorand standard assets. And uh, any future central bank uh, digital currency or referred to as CBDC built on Algorand. Also, there was a skit on uh, Saturday Night Live not too long ago about uh, assets, right? And NFTs. What are what are NFTs? Well, another example of an NFT that we have actually on our blockchain are the, the copyright of the assets, and um, um, these copyrights are are, are actually uh, ASAs that are written to the uh, blockchain. And the Italian Society of Authors and Publishers. Uh, pumped nearly 100,000 creators and copyrights uh, out to the uh, Algorand blockchain. And the beauty of this is it's global, right? It's available globally. And this is something artists are looking for, something to protect their their music uh, uh, rights or their video rights or any kind of um, other assets that they may have in the way of, uh, of protection, you know, for copyrights. And I'm telling you, 4 million NFTs, right, uh, has been published. It's just a, an amazing thing. This is really going to be the future of the industry for, for doing copyright. So a game changer uh, in my mind. And uh, we have a link to the deck at the end as well. And we have all of the uh, links for many of these uh, on the slide so you can read more about them as well. Okay. So other use cases. Um, you get tamper-proof charity organizations. Um so at one point, uh, you know, there was a lack of uh, tracking on uh, some charity organizations. Um, and this was for, um, you know, like uh, relief efforts for natural disasters, uh, you know, many years ago, you know, 10, 12 years ago. And what was happening was uh, there was no uh, tracking of where the money was coming from and where it was going to. And that created a big problem. And with blockchain, everything's open and public and you can just track it, everything you need to track on that uh, blockchain, which is really um, uh, extremely cool. Um, Voting is, is tamper-proof, which is great. You know, that's what we need in this day and age. So there's no questions uh, asked about the, you know, the, the, the validity of voting. Uh, one, once it actually gets to a blockchain, it is immutable, right? It cannot be changed. So this is a, another great uh, use case. Healthcare, uh, you know, really, when you start thinking about all these different vertical markets, really, there's pretty much solutions in every one of them. Uh, in this case, with healthcare, you need global access. You know, let's say I'm traveling to Europe. I'm right now, I'm based here in, T in Tampa, Florida. And, uh, but let's say I go to Europe and I have a medical emergency. Well, gee, it would be nice for me to get at my records globally. And so the on-site training or, or care staff can also have access to those. Uh, you know, if I ever see a new doctor right now, even I got to spend a half hour writing out my history of my medical records. Uh, you know, really, it's coming to the point where people want to be in charge of their own information. And that's a very, very key thing. So healthcare is a, another great uh, solution. So I know uh, this is the, the, the precursor to a lot of um, uh, folks that are going to be building solutions in the uh, blockchain um, 
uh, for Israel blockchain uh, effort that's going on here. So we're giving you some ideas and the type of solutions that can be built. And then finally, we get into automotive with supply chain, visibility, uh, vehicle integrity, uh, you know, where they're actually putting in sensors into the engines that are right out to the blockchain. So you know exactly, you know, what the condition is of the vehicle that you're, you're purchasing. So some really creative solutions there and uh, really the theme of it being public and open and immutable in all of these is really a big, big, uh, big win. Supply chain, another great solution for, for blockchain. And it's really taking off uh, really leaps and bounds. If you take a look at the Algorand ecosystem here, all sorts of technical uh, companies and solutions being built, as well as a lot of financial um, uh, infrastructure type uh, things that are going on with uh, stable coins, as well as, um, you know, all these different exchanges and AMMs out there, as well as a lot of uh, applications. My goodness, uh, we we have a, a dev portal. I'm going to show you the link later where you can submit uh, solutions that you built or sample applications. And the list just keeps growing and growing. It's It's wonderful. A lot of good partners out there between key stakeholders and university partners, as well as really um a great great ecosystem with um over 500 companies leveraging um algorand's platform i wouldn't be surprised if it's double that by now so uh wrapping up this segment right here let's just talk about the protocol a lot of times we do have uh questions around protocols of the blockchain and we're going to cover this quickly because really the, the the bulk of this session is going to be about developing right and creating solutions but it is good to know that you have a very good solid uh proof of stake uh, protocol uh it is one that it provides true scalability over a thousand transactions per second and less than five second block times there is a couple other uh, types of protocols out there one is a proof of work which is like a bitcoin ethereum uh and those take uh, several minutes to create a block and not only that they're very expensive a lot of gas fees and and a, a lot of extra costs that are associated with each one of those uh with um other models, there is a, um, a proof of stake uh, protocol. Some of them are bonded. Some of them are delegated. Bonded means you put up a certain amount of money. Uh, and uh, you, you, if you become a bad actor at some point, it, it takes that away. Uh, that's got pros and cons to it. But the big con is the fact that it uh, can be, uh, you know, uh, denial of service attack could be played there. Or maybe they're putting up a million dollars. It might be, seem a lot, but they've got a scheme to get it a billion dollars. So that's a, a, minim, a minimal amount of uh, uh, front scalability. And then you get into uh, the other type of um, um, of uh, the uh, proof of stake with delegated and, and that's where the the actors or, or delegates are known ahead of time and because they're known ahead of time uh, you are subject to a denial of service attack so pure proof of stake protocol is one that algorand created and uh, silvio mccauley is our um, our founder of our company and he actually uh, won a uh, turing award he's a turing award winner and all of his uh, efforts for uh, you know doing hashing algorithms and uh, that type of information and verifiable random functions which we have open sourced on the algorand uh, github uh, is available for for you to peruse so everything is uh, is open source also, a lot of infrastructure longevity as well as technical flexibility. We're going to cover a lot of SDKs and capabilities that you have to use. Transaction certainty. As soon as a transaction is cre created, it's written to the blockchain. There's no forking in Algorand. A lot of extensibility on the platform as well as uh, extremely energy efficient. It's a green blockchain. Uh, we're not wasting all sorts of, uh, you know, electricity, uh, you know, with these big heavy computers that are like in, in proof of work uh this is very very green and that's a big big win nowadays for a lot of folks when they're looking for uh, a solution a global solution that it is green and in, indeed green cost efficiency as well uh you know a transaction on now grand is less than a 20th of a penny uh, which is ridiculous and, and very very low and then also you have true security uh as uh, most blockchains do with uh the with you know just inherent to the blockchain uh infrastructure but uh, that's a very very important point as well to make now i'm going to do a high level uh on the heart and soul of your solution which is layer one in the next section here and uh let's see here um if you do have questions you can go ahead and post them in the question panel there anybody attending 
and uh, you can uh, we'll see if we can get an answer to this as well. All right. So uh, layer one features for for DApps, and you got uh, Algorand accounts. We got Algorand standard assets, which are fungible, non fungible tokens. Also, atomic uh, transactions. Everything works, or none of it works. And Algorand smart contracts, which pr provide logic as to whether or not the um, um, the um, transaction gets uh, signed and approved. And then we also have some reporting capabilities. And all this is really a lot of good information up at our developer site, developer.algorand.org. So let's talk about accounts first. So what we have here is a standard account or a single account. So uh, be like maybe Russ or Ryan. And then we have a multi-sig account, uh, which is consists of like a uh, picture in mind, like a board of directors where you have maybe you have seven or eight directors. And let's say half of them, you know, four or five or pick threshold has to agree on a particular transaction in order for it to get written to the uh, blockchain. So that one there is very, very useful when you're working in a team environment or a lot of, a lot of, um, um, you know, votes that need to be cast among, among, amongst the group is a good example of that. And then you have a logic account or LSIG that, that would be uh, provided to do the signing. So if it returns true, it'll go ahead and sign the, sign the transaction. And if it's false, it will, uh, it will uh, uh, fail. So drilling into each of these a little bit, uh, ASAs, you have a fungible token. So what are fungible tokens? Well, every one of these is exactly the same. So things like you can think in your mind, cryptocurrencies, right? Every cryptocurrency coin is exactly the same. They're all worth exactly the same at the same time. Uh, also, you have some restricted fungible tokens, which allows for clawback uh, with uh, things like securities and government issued uh, fiat. Um, and then we get into our NFTs, which is really a big boom. I mean, think of think of this as maybe collectibles for those that are brand new to um, NFTs. You know, they're one of a kind type uh, things where, um, you know, a, like a baseball card collection. You have every card is valued by the the quality, uh, the quantity of those produced. Uh, they're valued by. Um, you know, the condition, the player, you know, the rarity, everything is, there's a lot of metadata associated with each one of these that make these uh, unique. Uh, real estate, another good example of that. You can have a two-bedroom condo in one part of town, a two-bedroom condo in another part of town, but they're worth different values because they're different surroundings, different environments, and maybe the insides are, are different, you know, in terms of one being newer than the other. Okay, so also you have uh, uh, restricted in that as well, non-fungible tokens, and that would be examples where you have uh, real estate or ownership registries. Okay, so um, we'll show you how to create one of these here in um, real quick visually. Uh, so this is the Algodesk IO. This is a, uh, a third-party product that is really cool to go ahead and create uh, uh, visually uh, an ASA or an asset. You can see we have three different networks here, testnet, betanet, mainnet. Let's go ahead and do uh, a testnet one. And let's go with uh, Algo Signer. There's different uh, wallet choices you saw there listed. One of them was, um, I may have fat fingered that. Okay, good. Grant access, and let's go with this one here. This is the account we're going to use, and it's loading that information. So what we're going to do right now is go ahead and create a uh, asset. So as I was saying, there's my algo as, as a wallet. Uh, you've got the algo signer, which I'm demonstrating here, and then there's a para wallet, which was the algorithm wallet up until recently, and, and para uh, took it over. So that's that's the the authorized uh, wallet for algorithm in on uh, iOS and, and uh, Android devices. All right, so let's go ahead and create an asset. We'll show you how this is done. So let's call this uh, Russ uh, Pizza. And then here's the unit name, which would be like an eight, eight character or less, less uh, descriptive. Uh, just go B to R. You could say how many of these you want to create. So if uh, I'm going to go ahead and create, so let's say 100,000 of these, and I'm going to give one decimal point. So it's actually a 10,000, right, point zero. Then you have a URL you can attach in here for more information. And then, then you can see the different functions for management, asset management down below. You can sign to separate accounts 
uh, the clawback function or the freeze function, the freeze funds or uh, reserve uh, management as well as overall management with the manager uh, type function. You did have the ability to put in a note field. This could be any structure. It could be text. It could be a JSON uh, structure. It could be a uh, object uh, that you would have for, for the uh, solution that you're building. So that's a free form uh, field uh, that you can use for really for anything that helps facilitate your application better. And then let's go ahead and create this. So again, it's going to take five seconds to go ahead and, and do this. Can you hear? And then it's going to go ahead and um, uh, wait for that confirmation and then be written out to the blockchain. And once it is, then you'll see it displayed here. Transaction six. I'm going to actually show you where you can view this transaction. This is wired up to one of our, our explorers that are out there. The Algo Explorer folks built a really great uh, tool here. And you can see here, I've got uh, the transaction ID, got the P Rust Pizza the creation. And also there's a, another um, uh, explorer, the Gold Seeker is another popular one a lot of folks use as well. And this one here, you can go out to uh, Testnet. And once again, I can go ahead and maybe search on that same transaction. You can see it right there. But what's really nice about this is instant feedback, right? That this just happened seconds ago and 42 seconds to be exact here. And it's already out there in, in the public uh, environment. So well, let's get back over to the deck and uh, continue on here. And let's do, uh, so that was an example of a fungible token. This is going to be an example of doing an NFT. So here's a minter uh, that we have that we could use for uh, building uh, NFTs visually once again. And there's many tools out there to go ahead and do that. And this is, let's do a refresh here. See if we can bring this up. This was a, this has been a little spotty this morning. I tried it once and it didn't work. And then I tried it right before we got on and it worked. It must be going through some maintenance on something. So we're going to boot on that one. But basically what you would see here is a uh, you'd see the ability to go ahead and do something similar like we saw before in the last demo. But we're actually adding in a visual asset. We're actually adding in a, an asset that could be like a, a picture or an image and uh, have that available in, in the portal. And I think I've got uh, some more. Um, um, slides down below on uh, resources for uh, NFT uh, marketplaces. And there's quite a few of them uh, that are built right now. So uh, uh, atomic transfers and uh, Ryan's going to show you this in the code uh, all, must all, all succeed or all fail. So in the diagram on the right there, you can see person A sends 50 algos over to person B. But person B then is going to return a concert ticket to person A. What happens if person B does not return the concert ticket to person A? Well, it's an atomic transfer, so none of this happens. And, you know, person A doesn't lose 50 algos. So it all succeeds or they all fail. On-chain native function, uh, ran layer one, easy to secure. Uh, you guarantees exchange of goods. Uh, really nice. And when you have lack of, uh, you know, you don't know who to trust out there nowadays. And this really is a good way to help help uh, solve that dilemma. And then also combine, you can combine this with other Algorand technologies. This is really the secret sauce a lot of times in building a solution is you're wrapping several transactions in the one and they all got to, they all got to fly or the, the, all bets are off. Some examples of atomic transfers, things like, um, you know, uh, efficient match funding or, you know, reduced counterparty risk, uh, things like circular trades, group payments, uh, and combining them with other layer one functions like ASAs or, or smart contracts. Then I get down to uh, smart contracts. So this is basically um, what we have is Teal, which is a transaction execution brand, uh, language. It's an assembler like language where, um, uh, you really is part of our, our, our VM, our AVM, Algorand Virtual Machine, that facilitates uh, the use of uh, logic. And also there is a, uh, a tool called PyTeal, which will go ahead and uh, recompile um, the uh, Python and, and, and spit out Teal. 
as well as reach. I'll be showing both of those in tomorrow's session on um, smart contracts that we're having. And then also we have smart signatures and, and contracts with, uh, you know, being able to approve spending transactions and then smart contracts with uh, facilitating things like global and local storage as well at the account level for local storage and globally to the blockchain for the other one. And again, you could, these are all combinable, all of these with, uh, you know, you can combine these with atomic transfers, Algorand assets, as well as uh, uh, smart contracts. Kind of a little bit of the architecture here for the uh, Algorand app architecture. We have the UI layer up front with using utilizing the Algorand SDKs or REST APIs with smart signatures. Then you have different uh, transaction types, a payment, an asset, or application type uh, transactions to the blockchain facilitating smart contracts and using, um, you know, the assets be creating like, uh, or using non-fungible or fungible tokens, payments might be between accounts, and then application calls might be smart contracts where you are integrating local and global state. Um, then the finally, we, uh, to end this section, we got um, Indexer is a reporting tool that facilitates uh, creating uh, solutions, reporting solutions on the uh, uh, data that's housed on the blockchain. How does it work? Well, it's basically an LD process that uh, is going to be skimmed and then created uh, into a PostgreSQL database. And that's what the queries are off of, a real database as opposed to a ledger. Uh, you could do a lot of these queries against the ledger, but it's not efficient. It'll just be very uh, time consuming. Like if you want to search from the beginning of the blockchain, it's millions of uh, you know blocks out there. So this is a really great way to utilize and build uh, reporting solutions. And you can access through this through all of the SDKs, the four that uh, uh, Algorand um, facilitates is Go, uh, or supports, I should say, is Go, Java, JavaScript, and Python. There are many more in the community, which we'll be talking about later. Also, a kind of um, an architectural diagram of how to combine layer one features. So this is a voting type solution where you've got a voting a commission account and a, a spending um a token right for voting uh, these are all going to be atomically grouped everything everything works or none of it does and then we're going to vote for candidate a let's say and then you have the voting smart contract to do the kind of uh, assessment on the voting uh, process itself and then increment uh candidate a vote total in global state so now that's available globally uh, so that's kind of a, a nice o overview of a voting type solution and another typical uh, scenario is like crowdfunding. And this is where you'd have like a crowdfunding escrow account with a smart signature that's going to go and facilitate payment from escrow to user one. So if the, um, you know, you have uh, folks that are going to be investing in this and, and you got the, the author, right. Or the guy that's trying to raise the money. So he's got to raise a certain amount of money in order to uh, satisfy uh, the development costs. And if he doesn't, then everybody gets their money back. So again, atomic group, that's what we're going to do uh, for this type of solution. Either it hits the threshold and everybody's happy or it doesn't hit it and, and nobody loses any money. Everything goes back. So again, this is really becoming a de facto way to do crowdfunding in, in, uh, in the industry was through, is through a blockchain type solution. All righty. So this is where we're going to switch gears right out of time here for, um, Ryan to come up. Outstanding stuff there, Russ. Thank you so much for the introduction there to what is blockchain. I'm going to uh, take us on to the next section here, and we're going to uh, get started building. All right. So in this section, we're going to cover a little bit about what uh, your development resources will look like within the Algorand ecosystem, as well as building out your development environment. And then ultimately, let's build, let's see some code. Yes, we want to start uh, with our developer resources. The f one of the places that I really want you to make sure that you go and check out is the um, developer portal, which is at developer.algorand.org. Hit that QR code or just take a look at it here, right? Uh, so the... Um, it, it, it's organized into in, into a number of sections here where you, where you can uh, get started with the basics, uh, take a look at how smart contracts are built, tokenization, um, and I want you to be able to uh, get into the docs, and we've got them organized by getting started and getting details and then some other sections as well. We'll go through uh, the bits about the SDKs and the APIs uh, as we go through this, and then across the top, you've also got some tools where you will 
where, where we also take a look. So developer portal uh, is one of the most important places for you to learn. The next place that I want you to take a look at is going to be, I wanna make this go full screen again. Why does this not go full screen? It should be this one here. Well, we'll just make, here it comes. Ah, aha, uh -huh. here we go. The next place I want you to take a, a, a look at is the, well, the, get, the GitHub. Um, no, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the, the Discord server, and I'm not finding my slide for that. So uh, make sure that you are going to uh, discord.gg slash Algorand, and there we have our, um, our, our Discord server where we have asynchronous communication. We've got threads for everything, all the different languages and so on. I want you to make sure that you are connected with us there because we are there basically around the clock and certainly our community of devs, over 25,000 of them are there to help you out. So that is discord.gg slash Algorand. All right, um, let's get into talking about our development environment. Uh, I think the first place that you're gonna start is you're going to take a look at uh, IDEs. So your integrated development environment, uh, we've got a number of them available here on the dev, uh, on the dev portal here. Um, I happen to use um, uh, Visual Studio, uh, uh, Visual Studio Code, and I want to show you quickly how we can get that set up to use this uh, Visual Studio Code extension. All right, so if you um, are not a Visual Code um, user, you can find uh, all of the different IDEs here under Tools. And if you go to the IDE section, you can uh, select from the others as well. Uh, I'll, I'll, hi I'll highlight Algodia as, as a great tool that you may want to take a look at, as well as uh, the, the Algorand uh, Studio and Algorand Builder as well. All right, uh, back over here to what my environment looks like. All right, so this is uh, VS Code, and I want to show you that extension. So. If you come into your extension and you type in Algorand, you're going to see a couple of different um, uh, extensions that are available. I want you to make sure that you install the VS Code extension here. Uh, this will do code highlighting and um, give, give you some context as you are writing teal or PyTeal. Uh, this will be important in your uh, as you develop. The other piece I would like you to take a look at would be the Reach IDE. Uh, and there's a plugin for that. Uh, Russ is going to cover Reach tomorrow, so you can get yourself set up by installing both of those um, uh, plugins ahead of time. All right, um, we are going to come and take a look at uh, code in just a little bit, but let's go back here to the presentation and we will take a look at what comes next. We want to take a look at the sandbox, all right? So the Algorand sandbox is the first thing that I want you guys to take a look at. We have a GitHub repo for it. Uh, so we'll go and take a look at that. Um, importantly, what you need to do for uh, to, to make the sandbox work is you must have uh, GitHub installed and you must also have the Docker desktop installed. And with those two pieces, you can clone it and you will have the sandbox running. So let's take a look at that. And while we get it set up, I will have us come over. I'm back. I'm back to my ID. I've got a terminal open, and I'm going to get clone the sandbox from its your uh, from from its repository here. All right. Put the cursor there and run that. And then if I change directory into the sandbox, I can now run the command sandbox up. And I like to use dev. And the and, and using the verbose flag here. So by bringing Sandbox up in dev mode, this is going to uh, build us the latest version of the binaries uh, for both the indexer and for the algo D. Get us get us a network. This will all be running locally, um, and it will um, provide all the APIs as well. So let me show you what that looks like. And on our next slide here, what, um, what is contained within the Algorand sandbox is the entire Algorand development environment in a box. All right, so this virtual machine here running as a Docker container actually has APIs 
out here that it provides uh, on these different ports available uh, to your uh, SDKs to connect to. So what are those uh, three different components? Well, they are the, the nodes or uh, which is actually the, the ledger, the blockchain ledger. And th that will be known as uh, Algo D. So those are the nodes that are making up the Algorand network running locally on your machine, as well as uh, a, a query, a query, queryable data set uh, of, of a database of all of those uh, blocks that have been written to the ledger. Uh, that is called the indexer. And so you can query that to get uh, historical information uh, about the blockchain ledger stored within this database. And the last component is going to be uh, a wallet or a key manager, actually. So we call this KMD. And KMD is all about storing the keys for the accounts um, that are um, that 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 you will use within your development environment, and, and of course, then then your users would uh, use their own wallet in order to interact with your applications once you finally get that deployed. So, in this um, in this sandbox component, like I said, those three components, the Algo D, the indexer, and the KMD wallet, are all exposed uh, on localhost on these th uh, three different ports. Um, so that you can interact with them from your SDK, which I think is the next slide. Yes, SDKs. The last part of your development environment are the SDKs. So Algorand provide these four uh, SDKs in uh, so JavaScript, Java, Go, and Python. You can find them here uh, on our developer portal, as well as many more. And if we take a look at this one, no, go back here. I want to click on this. There we go. Nope, still not letting me get there. Well, we'll just escape and we'll just go find it. All right. If we come back up here to tools and we search on SDKs, you can see all of the different uh, SDKs that we have available. So .NET, Dart, PHP, Rust, Swift, uh, Unity, all sorts of SDKs to help you builders uh, get connected in the language of your choice and start writing uh, smart contracts and transactions against the Algorand blockchain. All right, I am going to show us some uh, some code today in Python. So I have already uh, downloaded and installed my Python um, uh, SDK. And I uh, will take us through some of these pieces here. So um, we saw that we started up the, um, the, the sandbox in, in dev mode, right? And, and what, when, when it returns uh, to us, it, it, it shows that it has started um, the, the, the Algo D in, in the latest version. So this is actually uh, 3.5. So this is now uh, activated. This, this is the most recent version that has the AVM 1.1. So this is now activated in beta net and test net. And this will activate uh, on Saturday in mainnet. And of course, since this is running locally in your sandbox, then you are now running the AVM 1.1 locally here. Also, we started uh, in an indexer. A quick, a couple of quick commands that you can see with Sandbox um, that, that that it provides to you by default. Um, it provides the the goal command line utility, and it provides uh, three different accounts to you. So if we run this command, Sandbox goal account list, we will see that we have been provided. Uh, these three different accounts, and they are also funded with uh, some uh, algo already. All right, so this is this is this is nice because now you can get straight into development. You you don't have to go to uh, to a dispenser and and figure out how to allocate the the tokens to yourself. They're they're already here, and these three accounts are stored within the KMD within the key management daemon, right? That wallet, so you can interface with that through the SDKs. I want to show you what that looks like um, right after I show you about how you can generate a, an actual uh, an actual key pair. All right. Importantly, uh, as I said earlier, that I have already installed the Python SDK, and that was, of course, done with uh, pip3 install 
um, pi algorand SDK, right? All right, off it goes. Already installed, good deal. All right, let's take a look at uh, what we're gonna do here. We're going to import both account and mnemonic, and we are going to use the generate account um, uh, method here in order to use some randomness from the local machine in order to derive my address, a private key, and a passphrase. I'm just gonna run this so that we can actually see what this looks like. We are going to leave the sandbox and we are going to go back here. Oh, you know what? I forgot to show you this slide. I have to show you this slide because it's important. Um, yes, here we go. Because it's this time of the video when we get to say, it's time to biddle, all right? Builders, uh, I have this GitHub repo here. It is at the Algorand-DevRel organization on GitHub. And we have this uh, workshop getting started repo for you to get clone and hit the um, QR code there and you can get there. Um, and then where we want to go from there in our code, once you get that, so once you get that cloned, um, you will end up with this uh, repository. The, uh, there's a great uh, readme file here that walks you through uh, building Web3 on Algorand. And it, it goes through essentially all the stuff that I just uh, showed you here about installing Sandbox and so on. And then uh, ultimately getting uh, the, the sample output. Uh, so where we're at right now, we are going to start um, uh, interfacing with some of our APIs and the first thing that I want to have us do is generate that account. All right, so we talked about um, the, uh, the, the the SDK and getting that installed. Now let's take a look at this. And we are going to uh, just run Python here. And we are going to run this one here. This is the first one. And we are going to generate an account. All right, so what has happened here is it has returned to us an Algorand account. Uh, this is this is the address that we that, that we will see. Uh, this is a base thirty two encoded version of our private key. Well, actually, of, of, uh, sorry, of the of the public key. Um, the the private key is something that we actually typically don't uh, work with as developers, but this is what it looks like. So this is the base sixty four representation of the. Um, of those 32 bytes that are your private key. Really what developers work with is this passphrase, um, so, or, or mnemonic, we call this. This is 25 words that are actually derived from the private key here. These are very important because you can use these 25 words in this exact order to import your address into any wallet. And uh, then you can use that wallet to, to send value to, uh, but just make sure again that your passphrase, your, your mnemonic is uh, stored safely and that you don't share it with anybody because that way somebody else could authorize transactions um, for you. Uh, so importantly, keep those 25 words. Uh, also, if I, run this, uh, if I run the script one more time, notice that the address that it generates is different. Okay, so it, because this generate account um, method here is using randomness, every time that you run it, it is going to generate a new address. And you can also notice that these uh, mnemonics are, are different as well. So that's a great way for you to get a new uh, address. Those addresses can be used on any of our networks. They are generating um, an address that can be imported into a wallet and used on any of the Algorand networks. All right, next thing that I want to uh, show you is, um, is, is show you get, getting the account balance. All right, so up here at the top, I wanna to show you that what we're going to import this time. So new, we are going to import uh, a KMD, all right? So this is getting us so that we can connect to the wallet, all right? And we are also going to import the client for AlgoD so that we can ask it for some information. In order to connect to the, the wallet and to connect to the AlgoD, we have to provide it an address uh, and a token. 
And as we saw on the slide earlier, um, these, these are the ports that they're on on your local host. And then this key is uh, 32As for you to uh, send in there. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is simply make uh, client connections to each of those. It's very simple. We just pass, we just say, hey, make us a client passing those in. And then uh, we want to make a wallet by default. Uh, we've, because we are connected to Sandbox, we know that we are going to have this unencrypted default wallet. So we just do that. And then we are going to gather those three wallets that we saw before. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is create a client to the Algo D node. Uh, and then we are going to get the addresses and get the balance amount from uh, each of those uh, addresses that we got in the wallet. So if we run this Python script here, Python uh, 2, we will end up with uh, the three addresses that we saw earlier and the, the balances that they each have. All right, so that matches, once again, I will just show you that that matches, oh wait, we, we're not in the same directory. We can just go back here and look, that's on three or two, can't remember, two. All right, so those are the same uh, three addresses that we uh, saw earlier that um, our, our sandbox goal account list was doing. All right, let's move on to uh, doing an actual payment transaction. All right, new in this one, uh, all that we have to do is import uh, transaction. And, and we are going to import uh, the JSON and the base64 because we are going to uh, write a little note and we need to encode it. So we're going to uh, import that library as well. Uh, everything else is fairly um, similar. Before, we're, we're gathering those um, wallets again, but importantly here, we are going to build our unsigned transaction. In order to do that, the first thing that we are going to do is get some uh, suggested parameters from the network. And that is using our AlgoD client. That's gonna be stuff like what's the current block number, um, what's the genesis ID of the node that we're connected to and so on. Uh, then we're going to define who the receiver is, and we are going to uh, have a note, and we're just going to say GM because everything's Web3 around here. So we are going to encode that as Base64, and we are going to send uh, 1 million micro algos, and because we are six, uh, uh, six decimal points of precision here, we know that that will be one algo. All right, so we're going to put that into a payment transaction method here, and we are going to uh, send it uh, uh, from address one, and we are going to send it to the receiver of the amount, and we are going to provide that note, GM. All right, so our uh, pattern that you're going to see re repeated within all, all of your different transaction types are going to be to build an unsigned transaction, sign that transaction, submit that transaction, and then wait for it to be confirmed on the network. So signing it looks like this. Just take that unsigned transaction and sign it, and we need to send it a private key. And so we're getting that by exporting that from our wallet for this particular address. And then once we have that signed transaction, we can use the AlgoD client to send the transaction and sending that signed transaction. And then, We'll get the transaction ID back for it, and then we will wait for it to be confirmed on the network. So let's run that. So if we've got this Python script here, and if we say uh, payment transaction, we will see that we have created a transaction ID, and then we are, so here it says that we, we submitted this particular transaction ID, and it was confirmed in the, in the first round, in our very first block, and this was the, the signature of that particular transaction that we uh, signed. This was the amount of one algo or one million micro algos. And then we sent it from and we sent it to and the type was a payment transaction. All right. And then this is our note, but that's base64 coded. We don't know what that is. So down here, uh, we do decode that and it was in fact GM. All right. 
Very good. We are now going to move on to getting some account info. Okay, so this is this is a nice, uh, easy one here. So sometimes you will want to know uh, what an account holds. Uh, a, a, a pretty basic um, um, method here is to create our client, and then we are just going to use the account info um, method here uh, for each one of those. So if we run this one here, this is the fourth one, we are going to get for each of those different accounts, uh, a whole bunch of information. So let's just take a look at uh, this, this particular account because they're essentially all the same. It'll tell us what the address is. It'll tell us what their current balance is in uh, micro algos, uh, some other parameters. And then importantly, it's going to talk about the assets that it holds the uh, the apps that it has created, the assets that it has um, that it holds, or the the assets that it has uh, created, and then um, some some other bits about if this one happens to be participating in uh, consensus because this this network is 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 running locally and they're participating in 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 the consensus. So we see the keys that are associated with that, and a bunch of other bits. We're going to go and um, see how this is updated here next when we go in and actually create an asset. So Russ showed you visually how to create an asset. I'm going to show you programmatically how to create an asset. And we are going to use, uh, this time when we are building our unsigned transaction, we are going to use a different transaction type being the asset config transaction. And we, with this, um, uh, with this transaction type, we are actually going to be uh, defining the parameters to create uh, a fungible token here. So we are going to create uh, uh, 10,000 of these, uh, but we are going to uh, put our decimals at two. So actually we are only going to create 100 because that's where the decimal would end up uh, looking right there. We would put put it there. So we're going to create 100 of these with a precision of one hundredths. All right, we are going to call this one the fun talk and the fun. So we have this fun token here. Um, and we are going to uh, leave a number of these fields uh, blank. We are going to only define the manager address so that we can manipulate this um, address in the future if we wanted to. Uh, importantly, Here's a nice uh, bit for you if you want to uh, define uh, some metadata about your uh, asset, you would put that here in the URL field. That's 96 bytes worth of data that you can uh, put the path to your metadata file. And then typically you're going to use the metadata hash field to take the hash of that file and store it here so that everybody knows, yes, this is uh, actually the file data that they are committing to when they created it. All right. Uh, and there are some uh, some specs out there, uh, ARC3 and ARC69. These are uh, Algorand requests for comments uh, hosted on the Algorand Foundation organization on GitHub. So that would be github.com slash Algorand Foundation slash ARCs. That's capital A, capital R, capital C, lowercase s. And you can find specifications for metadata there. All right, um, enough about that. So we would... So we're making this uh, file and then uh, we're making this transaction and, and the sign and submit look exactly the same. All right, we just we just have to sign that particular transaction type, send it and, re and, and wait for it. So let's do that now. And this is the fifth one that we are doing. And importantly, when we get this back, the response that it gives us, it's going to give us, um, the transaction ID, and then it gives us the asset index. So this is um, the, the asset identifier, the unique piece that makes this asset different than anyone else on the Algorand blockchain. So it is ID number two. And that is important for when we move on to our next part, which will be to opt in. So ultimately what we need to do is we wanna send this to somebody else and that somebody else must opt in to the, uh, to, to the proper ID before they, um, before they may receive it. So that means that you can't, on the Algorand network, you can't spam somebody's account with, uh, with assets. They have to decide that they want it. 
All right. So you may, if you're running this code, you may have to change this to match. Okay. So make sure that you read this note here. Um, that's also going to be the same in the atomic transfer. We have that coming up next. All right. So let's do this. So this is going to have uh, account number two uh, opt in to this uh, address here. So if we, uh, you know what, actually, I want to do this first. I want to, I want to show you the account info before we opt into it, because I want to show you now that one of these accounts, I think it should be the first one, right? So the first account now actually has a created asset here. So they created that asset, index two, right? And it had all of those uh, fields there. Uh, somewhat difficult to read, uh, of course, because it's uh, base 64 for the uh, encoding here. Um, there is the asset that was created at index two. Now what we want to do is we want to we want to have account number two opt into it. So that's Python uh, six. And when they opt into it, that just means that they can receive it. The last thing that I want to show you here is about atomic transactions. And this is what Russ was talking about when he had those uh when he had the ticket sale so he he said oh well we want to have one person have the ticket and one person have the algo and they want to make sure that they um uh, that all the transactions uh succeed or all of them fail what we're going to do here is we are going to build two different transactions so we are going to build an unsigned payment transaction and we are going to build an unsigned asset transfer transaction all right and we are going to pay uh one algo for 10 of uh, the asset index two. And then we are going to group those transactions together. This means that they have to be in this order uh, and, and only be these two transactions because uh, they get hashed together and that group ID then gets inserted into each of those transactions. When And then separately we need to sign, so for the first transaction, address two is going to sign it. And for the second transaction, address one is going to sign it. And then we are going to group those signed transactions back together. And then we are going to send transactions. Notice that is with an S. So we are going to send a signed group. And when we do this, voila, we are going to see that seven, that a atomic transfer happened, meaning that now um these two pieces happened here the uh well it, it shows it here but if we go back and we look at the account info for these we will see now that one of these accounts now has it must not be this one here this account now has uh has assets of 10 and they have slightly less of the um uh, of, of the algo assets because they paid it to the other one. So then we'll see that the, the, the first account uh, has more. So we see that they have created assets and they have uh, 10 less than the total that they have and they have a few more there. So that wraps it up for me and building. Uh, Russ, are you ready to wrap us up? So yeah, we're gonna wrap this session up here now. Um, and go over the ecosystem. There's many, many resources available here. And the first one we want to talk about here, there are many tutorials and solutions and articles on the dev portal. And you can also create your own now right through the portal. You can contribute and uh, hit the contribute button and then create your own um, a tutorial solution or article. Uh, and that'll be viewed for consideration and uh, with uh, the DevRel team. And you'll be able to uh, get something published right on uh, the developer portal. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so similarly, um, under the ecosystem page, under tools, if you uh, hit the tools button, you'll see this ecosystem uh, uh, tools and projects list. Uh, there is a submit a project button. So you can submit any kind of like new app you created there or to show off or any tools for developers to use, uh, new SDKs, that sort of thing. So that's available there. If you scroll down that page, many different wallets are available. You can see all the ones listed here. We mentioned a few of those during the session. I showed you those. Also, a lot of framework components. Algo Builder is a really good tool. Pipeline UI is fantastic for building front ends, uh, ready to use Algorand functional components. So like you want to have an account pop up on uh, JavaScript on the, on the web front end. 
uh, with the QR code and the address, there's a, there's a component to do that. And so really good stuff there. So a lot of great stuff coming from the community as well as these awesome SDKs. Uh, uh, Brian, I mean, uh, Ryan alluded to these. There, there's actually a brand new uh, .NES, uh, .NET SDK going to be out shortly as well uh, that uh, we'll list on this page. There's also an existing one too. So a lot of different um, SDKs available for you. Uh, we also have bounties on the uh, the Algorand Foundation is the is a um, company that's responsible for token economics. Um, Brian and I work for Algorand Inc. That's the technology um, um, uh, uh, company. And then also you see the the uh, the link here for the uh, the GitHub. If you uh, click on that, then when you get the deck, you can see all the most recent GitHub bounties. So you can make some money on some uh, uh, tasks that need to be done. Uh, either by uh, Algorand or by uh, partners. Uh, there is a grant program too, the Algorand Foundation provides uh, under the Algorand.foundation site, so good information there. And if you wish to be a, come a Algorand ambassador, and get really involved in the community, contact Stephen at uh, Algorand.foundation. I currently only have over 500 ambassadors in, in over 60, uh, 60 or 70 con uh, countries. Uh, Twitter Spaces. Uh, we have a new Twitter for Algorand Dev, so just go to Algo Devs, and you'll be able to uh, follow that. And um, uh, we'll have Twitter Spaces coming up on that site uh, on a regular basis. And also, we have the Algorand Developer Office Hours. Uh, we have that uh, scheduled for a couple weeks out. Is next one every couple weeks we do these and sign up for those at algorand.com slash developers. Um, <clears throat> this is a recap of a lot of the Discord resources as well as the developer portal, office hours, our YouTube channel, and the reach docs. Uh, so there's the QR code uh, that uh, Ryan was looking for for the Discord. Uh, you can go out and, and, and uh, go out to that one there. And then also you have um, uh, the summary here. So to sum up our session here today, uh, we did an intro on blockchain, all the different uh, layer one features, and, and we talked about use cases as well as part of that. Uh, Ryan brought you through getting started, showing you the sandbox and several uh, examples in, in Python and all of those examples who run in different languages as well uh, that he showed off uh, in, in doing creating accounts, uh, doing a transaction, uh, doing uh, creating a asset configuration, for example, that he did. Uh, and I provided the link to his uh, his uh, code in the um, in the chat window. I think. Uh, that is about it. I want to thank everybody for attending. And uh, uh, I think that's it. Ryan, you got anything else to say? Just, yeah, thank, thank you to everybody. Russ, uh, great presentation. Thank you very much. It was fun working thank with you, you as always. And uh, to everybody participating in the hackathon, best of luck to you. Thanks very much and have fun building an Algorand.